go live and then i will begin the session Okay, all right. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining in. I hope everybody is able to hear us loud and clear and also see the presentation slide. Okay, so this is yet another learning journey that I do every Saturday. Normally, it happens at two o'clock, but today we just on a lot of yours request. We made it on at seven o'clock today so that all of you can attend right so many of you requested that you want to attend at in the evening because of your regular schedules so we just made it in the evening so that may most of you can attend i hope everyone can hear me and also see the slide just put in the chat box so that everything works fine i just confirm everything is working fine you confirm everything is working fine okay thank you kazi priyanka thank you everyone for confirming thank you for Perfect. So today we have with us Dr. Anita. Okay. Today we have uh, with us Dr. Anita. Dr. Anita, if you could switch on your camera. Yes. So here is Dr. Anita for you. Uh, today she is the speaker. Dr. Anita has done her D, PharmD in 2016 from PSG College of Pharmacy, Coimbatore, and received her BCPS, which is one of a rare kind of certification, which uh, not many pharmacists in India have. We have only, I think, four or five of the pharmacists from PharmD who have qualified BCPS and they are practicing right now. Only two of them in India are right now practicing. This is what I know. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Anita will share more of that in the session today. So she has been uh, one of the best students and she received best clinical performance award during her college days. She has been working as a clinical pharmacist in neurology specialty. Uh, she has been, you know, working specifically in neurology, epilepsy care center, epilepsy pharmacy specialist for the past six years. Her area of interest include epilepsy, neuroimmunology, stroke, and clinical research. She has published a lot of her articles in national and international journals. And she's also one of the favorite speakers for a lot of forums like this, where she has been invited and asked to share about BCPS and other aspects of PharmD clinical practice. She is currently working as a clinical pharmacist at Kauai Medical Center and Hospital Coimbatore, India. So welcome, Dr. Anita. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing for this session. And I'm sure a lot of pharmacy professionals will be benefited from today's session. So thank you so much. Thank you, Manoj, for inviting me to this particular event. I'm happy to share my experience uh, regarding the preparation as well as my clinical experience so that I hope I can motivate and inspire our budding pharmacists uh, to build their career. And those who are interested in certification, uh, maybe I can help them, guide them how to prepare and how to uh, start their steps towards uh, this particular certification exam. Absolutely, absolutely. So Dr. Anita has some surprises for all the participants today who are attending the session. She'll be giving some gifts uh, if you are interested in BCPS uh, certification. So Dr. Anita, yes, go on. You may share the slides. And first you share your journey as a PharmD professional and as a BCPS certified professional because that your story might be something which uh, may inspire a lot of PharmD professionals, right? We do not have uh, 
lot of positive things about farm day in india right now but people like you uh, you know you're doing great and i'm sure these kind of sessions will help uh, our farm day professionals to get inspired and uh, keep learning uh, and also keep delivering best of clinical practice to, for the benefit of our patients right at the end of the day whatever we do whether we practice pharmacy or we practice medicine at the end of the day patients are the center point for everything we do right and uh, with this kind of certification and your journey i'm sure a lot of pharmacists will be inspired to take on uh, take up bcps as a certification and definitely improve the quality of care uh, for the patients in india so thank you so much uh, you may please share this slides and please share your journey first and then later on of course we'll come back to the slides and learn from you yeah i'll try to keep it as short as possible uh, as you rightly told uh, practicing in india as a clinical pharmacist is kind of a challenge uh, so many hurdles to be crossed to continue your career in india uh, if i recollect i think most of majority of my classmates and most of my seniors juniors either they have reached the foreign country or they are in the process of going abroad so yeah. as you know the youngsters and india is losing a lot of youngsters uh, not only our uh, graduate students uh, but in all the professionals especially in the medical professional uh, field uh, it's like most of them are running away from india to abroad uh, the main issue is um, the financial part we all know it's nothing a secret anymore so uh, by crossing these hurdles staying back in india and providing a service to our population is a real struggle that we have to find a way actually absolutely so my uh, my path was like i didn't choose farm day with so much of dreams but i wanted to do something different at that time mbbs engineering and nursing was kind of uh, the main option for all of them money making the reputation uh so many factors to be considered and uh, you know the neighbors most of them will be engineers there was a trend in engineering at that time so i just wanted to do something different and i told my parents that if you can give me some something new especially something which doesn't have an entrance examination because all the people were running around so many crash courses and i was seeing them uh, sinking in so much of classes and tiring hours even after completing the 12th board exams they were running behind all these exams so oh. i was I, i just want some time off and i would like to do something different so that's when the swamdi course option came and when i entered as all of us had the same difficulty struggling with all the first year courses and from second year actually the clinical topics started and then i started cultivating an interest uh, within myself i started learning Uh, not only for the exam point of view but i wanted to understand why we are trying to uh, learn the subject what will be the practical application of course exam questions are kind of that way uh, but still unless we have an interest we may not be going out of the syllabus to know uh, what we have to know uh, how it will help in our clinical practice so that particular out of the syllabus learning helped me a lot to focus on to this uh, clinical pharmacist field so as i was about to complete my farm d during the internship time i had an opportunity to go to the university of toledo at ohio usa so i was there for two months and that gave me a different perspective towards our profession so the standards they were maintaining the kind of services they were giving to their patients and how good how strong they were in their basics and whatever they learned throughout their farm d career believe me during my 6th year like almost end of the internship i went there and i was not confident to open my mouth at any point of time because i didn't want them to uh, know we were so low in the sense my knowledge and like if they asked me a question i didn't have a perfect answer to give even even if they asked me the oha classification i was not even sure how many classes of medications were there maybe it was my anxiety or maybe i was not thorough enough with my studies so i knew they were very strong and they had a focus and they knew what they want to do and they knew what they have to provide to the patient and where they should be strong and how they should practically use it 
so when i came back to india i had a feeling like i should not use this particular opportunity to move abroad and again provide use my talent to take care of the abroad patients alone maybe my country deserves my service and i should be i have the responsibility to take care of my people so i decided it was a big decision to stay back in india till now even few minutes back the question i faced was why you are not trying abroad why you are not going abroad or what is stopping you from going even with the certification why can't you just go just fly away from india have a good future but something i don't know something is pulling me back uh, maybe professional and non professional factors uh, and main thing i didn't take up the certification to go abroad the certification was done for uh, improving my knowledge and improving my practice so uh, like for almost past 6 years i have been working in neurology and this particular specialty was not my choice it was given to me even though i tried running away from this particular department uh, i was told like you are not given an option but you have been asked to be there so without zero person interest even i will put minus 1 or minus 2 marks for that i was not at all interested in this particular department but slowly uh, recollecting my previous experience i understood uh, nothing was of my interest but wherever i came i started cultivating my own interest so i found something uh, where i will be focused on i had something to learn and my doctors were also very supportive so slowly i started feeling more and more good and comfortable with neurology as i started learning more more of this brain all the parenchyma vasculature spine so many imaging learning the mri going through the Uh, actually going through the experience of each and every patient and caregiver made me understand that we do have a good role in neurology as a clinical pharmacist it's actually not just about the drugs but non pharmacologically what we can do and uh, mental and physical support what we can give to them it's part of the treatment so it's not just the medications which we are trying to give them but even the small conversations and communication we have even even if you don't talk to them just patiently sitting with them and listening to their stories and difficulties that's all what they want not just the medications we give but spending some time with them uh, that's the best cure actually that's the best best uh, best cure which we can give it to them okay so i think absolutely <laughs> I don't want to make it boring but this is overall thing which i went through so basically i want to serve my population as much as possible and i am trying to do better and better with uh, much more learning and this bcp certification was just one part of it absolutely that's such an inspiring journey you had and i'm sure a lot of struggles you faced in between uh, you know we always see the brighter side of the you know success but uh, you know there is always a lot of hurdles and there is always a back story uh, what kind of uh, you know hurdles you faced with respect to preparation uh, you know we'll just begin with little uh, two questions and then we'll uh, begin with the slides you may share the slides later on participants how are you uh, finding the session so far is it inspiring and just put that single word in the chat box so that we know uh, it is helping you a lot is it inspiring uh, type inspiring if it is inspiring looking forward to hear uh, see your chats in the chat box so a uh, meantime uh, dr anita uh, i'm sure uh, you had a lot of you know hurdles in between the bcps and your cur- current uh, farm day curriculum that you had right so that bridge that uh, was missing was your struggle right so how what do you uh, tell our farm day professionals who want to take up bcps as a certification course uh first of all the financial part that's the main thing most of them asked me and i cannot uh, escape from that so financial burden is too much especially uh, considering the salary which the clinical pharmacists receive it was a big struggle so uh, i had to request the people who gave me this course uh, those organizations regarding the difficulty uh, we are facing financially and uh, choosing that particular course which one to choose based on our needs uh, because as you know most of the americans are going behind this certification because it's a requirement for them uh, or it gives them a good identity so for them 
uh, choosing the material was kind of easy because they have good guidance uh, their seniors and their uh, maybe the teachers all were helping them to do that but for an indian farm d based on our learning which one would be better that was a great question i had to answer myself so financially i had to slowly keep on having some savings so this preparation took over for almost 3 years so i had kind of enough time to save for this particular examination second main struggle was the time uh, the time for study so my duty or my job demanded kind of long working hours so i was not like time bound to my work uh, it was not a strict 8 or 9 hours working but since the patients were coming continuously for emergency or some issues or for admissions and all even if it's like late evening time we had to stay back we had to uh, see what happened to them whether they required admission or not medication wise what changes or decisions we had to make so it was like it went on like even 12 or 14 hours job most of the days rarely i come out after an 8 hour schedule uh, most of the time it was like 12 to 14 hours and my uh, my doctor was very clear that you can't escape from your job telling that you have to study so I, I had to find time in between my job to learn and you know this exam is really uh, a tough one and unless you dedicate yourself for studying that particular content uh, you are not going to uh, it's not going to be an easy one for you to attend so i understood it requires time and you had to start from the basics starting from the anatomy physiology so i was patiently waiting learning discussing uh, finding time and the preparation was very slow uh, it took like over 3 years so time finding time dedicating time was the second difficulty which i faced and then uh, once you feel like you have gone through the content you start attempting the mcqs then you will understand like you have not reached anywhere then you have to start learning again <laughs> same story it's the same like when you go for attending a simple university exam you feel like you have done everything but seeing the question you will feel like you have forgotten yeah. the thing. so having uh, 175 questions and uh, limited time so you will have around one to one and a half minutes for attempting each question and the question will be like a big paragraph and you need to find out which all are the uh, uh, clues they give you and with those clues you have to find the right answer so the understanding part it was not just mugging up or by hearting the concepts but you need to understand the very basics build upon that understand the disease nicely then you have to learn the treatment part and only with this strong foundation you will be able to attend each and every question it's very important that you understand what you are learning uh, because it's totally an application based mcqs it's not just a 20 mark essay where you get a one word like uh, describe the cns or explain the various parts of cns and then you have so much of stories to write regarding brain and spine but this is just a single answer that you have to select from four options and at least two or three will be looking alike you'll feel like all the three are right so choosing the best one from that two or three right answers is the third struggle third struggle in the sense uh, it comes with the learning part how you learn what you understand and how uh, good you are in your understanding part uh, i think these are perfect. the main struggles which i faced perfect so basically you know to summarize money is obviously the you know challenge for most of the indians here and uh, the second challenge is time you know we all have 24 hours how meticulously we manage that 24 hours uh, determines how long we go in terms of success and finally the preparation it is always the you know preparation that matters a lot so thank you so much for uh, and dr anita for that inspiring journey now we look forward to see the slides and learn from your uh, slides and of course your practical experiences through the slides would you share the slides or shall i share it for you uh, yeah now are my slides visible no not yet what about now no not yet please click on the share screen button uh, on zoom down green color button yeah i got the share screen it's not visible yet if you want me to share from my end i'll do that no problem 
Yeah, I'll just give it one more try. Is it visible now? Yeah, it is visible now. Yeah, please do it on the full screen mode, and we are good to go. Yeah, is it fine now? Uh, not yet. So I have put it in full screen. Now is it visible? <laughs> not yet. Uh, what about now? Uh, you please stop sharing, and then. Uh, the slide is already open, so don't worry about that. Just stop okay. sharing and then reshare it. So it will come in the full screen mode. Okay, I'm again going to the share screen. Yeah. Select the full screen uh, off uh, from that slide option, whatever is available to you. Okay. So is it visible now? No, not yet. No. Uh, click, click on the full screen mode. Yeah, perfect. No, you, you may click on that hide option on the Zoom screen. Okay. Yeah, Thank perfect. You. Go on. Yeah. Thank you so much. Go on. Thank you. Thank you for the help. Yeah, no problem, Dr. Anita. So participants, please confirm if you can see the slides uh, on the screen. Type Y in the chat box if you can. Yeah. Thank you, Raj, for confirming. Yes. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you, Yogesh. Thank you, Rutuja. Thank you. Yes, they can see the slides, Dr. Anita. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we just had a glance through my story. Now I'll be taking you through these specific topics and let me know if I have to stop in between. Okay. So you may, participants for you, you may start putting, uh, you know, your questions in the notepad. Don't ask in the chat box. At the end of the session, you can raise your hand on Zoom and then I'll unmute you. So you can ask questions directly to Dr. Anita. All these, uh, you know, 40, 45 minutes she'll be speaking and definitely she'll want to hear from you, right? She'll want to interact you, with you. So don't put in the chat box, just interact with her. It will be definitely good. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, till the BCPS, uh, I told you uh, the struggles and how I chose. I didn't mention about why I took BCPS. Uh, it was like uh, throughout this clinical practice, I knew I was lagging with a lot of knowledge. So I had some dots to be connected and I wanted to learn more. So going through a textbook learning was not kind of easy and I didn't feel it's practically useful for me. So one of my colleagues told me like there is this particular certification which can be done from India. The exam can be written from India. No need to go to US at all. And the only requirement where we have to where we can attempt is uh, the clinical experience. So for each and every specialty, they have a minimum number of years which we should show as a proof. So for this particular specialty that is pharmacotherapy, I had to show a three years of clinical experience. So when I completed three years, I thought, okay, I'll just start preparing for this particular exam. And uh, since I was working in neurology, when I went through the different specialties where they were providing the examination, I felt pharmacotherapy was good to go because the pharmacotherapy had all the specialties. Uh, we had to go through neurology, cardiology, pulmonology, oncology, all the areas, dermatology, nephrology, all areas were included in this particular specialty. So I thought, okay, it will be kind of refreshment for me and I can also learn what all uh, updated therapeutic approaches are there in each and every specialty. So, and there was no special examination for the neurology specialty. So at last I chose the pharmacotherapy for myself and then I started preparing. So what is this BCPS? It stands for Board Certified Pharmacotherapy Specialist. So it's a certification examination and it is provided by a board or an organization called Board of Pharmacy Specialties. So they do have different specialty areas where they are providing this particular certification examination and uh, they are updating themselves with new and new specialties. Neurology is yet to come. Uh, I discussed with the Board of Pharmacy Specialty regarding why they are not keeping neurology as a particular specialty. And it was like the number of clinical pharmacists in this particular area is kind of less in number and they don't have enough people or enough CPs to attend this exam. So unless they feel like this exam will provide uh, or will make a change among ourselves, they have to wait and we need to bring out more and more neurology clinical pharmacists so that this exam can be utilized. 
So, uh, why should you get board certified? This BPS or this organization, they are considered as a gold standard and they are providing this particular certification examination. So, once you receive this certification, it means that you have a good quality. You have qualified for an advanced level of practice. So, that is what they are trying to give to you. So, they are assessing whether you have the ability to take care of your patient and whether you are qualified enough to provide patient care and service. So, it is an, it is an additional certification or a qualification you get uh, other than your PharmD degree. So, it makes, sure, it makes sure that you are in a better position to give a better patient care. You improve your knowledge, you improve your approach to the patient and the whole perspective towards patient care will change with these certification exams. And you will also get to know what are the recent updates in each therapeutic management. Whether you take a specialty or a disease, uh, you know, day by day, the therapeutic approach is changing. And the recent advances are very important for us so that we can provide the best for our patient. So, how to select a specialty for certification? Uh, it depends on your interest, the area which you are practicing, your area of expertise and what you want to achieve. Like in your career, whether you want to become uh, a good experienced clinical pharmacist or do you want to be with the patient or go towards a research area, all these factors uh, does include in your decision making. So you must know that there are different specialties in which the BPS is providing this particular certification exam. So these are the different specialties and among this you can choose based on your interest or the area which in you are currently practicing because each of the specialty will require a minimum number of experience in that particular area. For pharmacotherapy it was three years, uh, for uh, infectious disease it's like four years, even in ambulatory care you require four years of experience if I'm not wrong. Cardiology also requires the same four years. Uh, I think critical care, three years is sufficient. Geriatric, uh, again, three to four years is required. So for each and every specialty, they have given a detailed candidate guide where you can see the minimal number of uh, clinical experience which you require. So how to prepare for the certification exam? Again, it depends on the specialty you are choosing and how experienced you are, how much knowledge you have, how much knowledge you are lacking. Uh, you have to assess your strength as well as the weakness so that you can know where you need to focus more. Uh, from my experience, uh, when I started learning, neurology was kind of easy because I knew the concept. But if you take the chapter of epilepsy, it was full of drug interactions. Uh, clinically, we don't uh, see much of these interactions because those combinations were not used. Or uh, what to tell, we were more aware of these interaction. Uh, like if you take a carbamazepine or phenytoin molecule, we knew these are highly interacting medications. But when gabapentin comes into place, uh, it's not something we use regularly as an anti seizure medication. And to be frank, I was not aware that gabapentin had very bad drug interaction with other medicines unless I started preparing for this particular exam. So uh, it depends on your expertise plus where you lack your knowledge, okay? So even though I was working in neurology, I had my own difficulty when I started learning that particular area. And the toughest one for me was pulmonology because uh, I was not personally prescribing or not choosing medication for pulmonology cases. And I was not even, uh, what it, I was not even focusing on pulmonology medications, uh, which my patients were taking. Like when the pulmonologist was selecting this particular medication, when they tried stopping that particular medication, uh, I never, uh, maybe I never focused on those things. I didn't notice what they were trying to change or use. And when I started learning pulmonology for this exam, it was like starting from the beginning, as if I had never learned pulmonology. So it was a struggle for me. I had to go through asthma and COPD like more than five times. Because without understanding the basic concept, learning the guidelines, answering the MCQs was really tough for me. Likewise, there were other areas also, but the toughest one for me was pulmonology. 
because my exposure was kind of zero in that area and then coming to uh, the reproductive health something which we uh, don't take care of ourselves where we don't prescribe the medications or it's not something we routinely uh, practice so that area luckily i had a doctor who taught me uh, about all the reproductive issues and she gave me a good guidance throughout that chapter there is a chapter called men and women's health in pharmacotherapy and uh, i received good guidance only because of that i could learn it very easily so again the expertise that's what the same i told the strengths and the weaknesses whichever specialty you are choosing all the specialty will have different chapters and if you feel one chapter is kind of easy for you either you can finish preparing that first itself or if you want to complete the toughest one go for the topics which you have no idea or you knowledge is zero in that area means just start with that topic make sure that you have enough time to prepare for that difficult one and again as i told one of the struggle for me was the working hours so when you start planning or preparing for your exam make sure that you have sufficient amount of time to dedicate yourself for the preparation uh, if it's a very hectic schedule for you in the work uh, maybe you should give a minimum of 6 to 8 months or maybe even one year should be uh, one year will be required for you for your preparation if it's very tough for you give it a one year time if it is kind of okay for you then at least a minimum of 6 months is definitely required for preparation for each and every specialty okay so if you can just start googling do your own research regarding how to prefer prepare for the exam you can see the reviews as well as feedbacks from various other pharmacists who have done this particular certification exam going through their stories will give you an idea about how tough the exam is and how uh, difficult it was for them to prepare and pass this exam all this research work will help you in planning your preparation the time as well as which resource or which course you have to uh, purchase or go behind for your preparation so the working hours and study hours totally depend on it totally depended on you it doesn't mean like if i took 3 years uh, doesn't mean you also require 3 years maybe you can finish it within 6 months time also and of course definitely you need a preparatory review course for you because just going through some textbooks and learning all the disease states it's not going to help you pass this exam this exam has its own style and unless you understand that particular mode of the exam and how to approach the mcq it's going to be really tough for you and if you take this pharmacotherapy specialty it's not just the clinical side or the therapeutic side which they are focusing on but it do have it does have some other areas to be focused on so uh, there are different organizations which are providing preparatory courses for these uh, certification exams so uh, most of the time or when i did my research these are the main ones which are providing the review courses so accp is the american college of clinical pharmacy and ashp is the american society for uh, american society for healthcare pharmacists if i am not wrong i forgot the uh, abbreviation part and next one is hymr which is the high yield med review and another one organization is the med 101 so i use both accp and hymr so i use the limited access of accp and i use the mock mock exam given by the accp uh, other than that i used high yield med review because i felt i have not gained what i wanted or what i wish to learn starting from the basics i didn't get that particular basics part from the accp this is my personal view so when i started researching for what else i could use for my learning then i understood the high yield med reviews they are providing a very good lecture starting from the basics it's like kind of comprehensive very lengthy but they do make sure that you understand with a good foundation the strong foundation is very well required for this particular examination because when you approach each and every question if you don't know the basic uh it's going to be very difficult for you to analyze to assess the particular clues given in that question so if you miss even one clue 
then your answer will be definitely wrong. That's what I learned going through all this review courses and after attending this particular exam. So your basic or your foundation starting from the anatomy physiology must be very good for you to understand the disease as well as the therapeutic approach. So going through the content outline, as I told, uh, the pharmacotherapy exam doesn't mean it's just a therapeutic approach towards the patient, but it is one of the main content. It comprises almost 65 percentage of this particular examination. And then the second domain is the application of evidence to practice and education. It just means the evidence based medicine, whatever you're learning or seeing in the literature, how to e extrapolate that particular data and how to apply it in your patient group what data to be used, how it should be used, whether all the data given in that literature is relevant or not, how to assess or criticize, in the sense, how to utilize that particular data from the literature. That's what they are expecting from this particular domain. And the third domain is the healthcare system and population health. It's like uh, how you're going to take care of the population in a whole. It's not just about a single patient, but uh, the preventive medicine, that's what they are focusing on mainly. Uh, and a small amount of regulatory affairs will also be there in this particular domain. Of course, since this is an American exam, they'll be uh, teaching and they'll be asking questions from the American regulatory part. Okay, so again, the plus point is this comprises only 10% of the exam. So just going through each and every domain. Uh, we'll just get into uh, the domains in detail so that you'll understand what you have to learn and how you should prepare for it. So it's like pharmacotherapy, how we are going to plan the treatment regimen for a patient. So how we will, the drug of choice, how we are going to choose a particular medication for that particular disease and for that particular patient with a number of comorbidities. So if it is a simple diabetes, it may be easy for you to start with the metformin or some gliptins. But what if the patient is having a renal impairment? What about if the patient is having a cardiac issue? So how are you going to change your decision? It totally depends on the comorbidities and the medications and other issues with the patient. The compliance part, the cost, all this will come into the play. So considering all these factors, how you are going to develop it? treatment regimen and how you are going to monitor the patient. If you start a medication, how will you monitor and how will you follow up the case? Whether any investigations are required or just clinical assessment is enough. So when to assess the patient, how frequently you should visit the patient, how frequently they should come and visit you or should they do some blood investigations in between and when should they contact you, uh, what will be the abnormal findings, all these uh, information you should be very thorough with so that you can know what is happening to the patient and when to make yourself available to the patient and the modification part with the monitoring parameters whether you need to make any changes to the medication is it like for example reducing the medication dose or should you add on a medication or should you stop a medication and uh, re, uh, start them on a different kind of medication. So all these changes of medicine, whether to start or stop or reduce or totally change the therapeutic regimen, uh, these modifications will be based on the follow up of that case. So what to follow up, when to follow up and what changes you have to make. These are all the uh, points which you have to learn for when you attempt this domain question. And the communication part, it's very, very important because uh, as I told you, it's not just about deciding and giving the medication, but communication plays a significant role because the patient must understand why they are taking this medication, what are we expecting uh, from this particular medication. Is it an improvement of the symptoms or are you trying to stop the progression of the disease or are you trying to cure the disease? You have to make a clear conversation, a clear understanding for the patient. This particular communication will help the patient to improve their medication adherence part. So developing the treatment, monitoring the treatment, modifying the treatment and communicating about the treatment, uh, not only to the patient, but also to the healthcare professionals. If you have a plan for this patient, 
why you chose this medication how you are going to monitor and what all changes can be made in the future what if the patient comes back with an intolerance to that particular medication you should have a plan for yourself so that particular planning uh, how we are going to plan when to plan all this guidance will be given uh, throughout uh, each and every chapter so you can use the guidelines the recommendations uh, if no guidelines are available how to use the literature support that's when the evidence based medicine comes into the play so communication and education it's like communicating with the healthcare professionals and educating the patients regarding the disease as well as the treatment so uh, i have given the details uh, for each and every heading so it's like patient centered evidence based pharmacotherapy will be planned and how to monitor whether we are giving a safe and effective treatment regimen and uh, the monitoring part will be an ongoing process whether we change the medication or not even if the patient is tolerating a particular medication we need to know how long they are tolerating it even after few years time they can have some kind of intolerance or adverse events so what to monitor what investigations to uh, follow up are also important as well as you need to know what kind of modification should be done for each and every abnormal value you find then communicating your plan pharmacological as well as non pharmacological treatment which you can provide to the patient and educating the patients as well as the caregivers that is another important thing uh, not only the patient but the caregivers should also be aware of the treatment regimen so that they can help the patient regarding their uh, with their treatment plan so the second domain is application of evidence to the practice as well as the education so how you are going to assess or analyze that particular literature how you are evaluating that literature and how you are using the information from the literature to the bedside so uh, when you learn the biostatistics part you will get to know about the clinical relevance as well as statistical significance so if a uh, data is given as statistically significant it may not mean it's clinically relevant so how to utilize that particular information when you are planning a treatment for the patient that's all you are going to learn in this evidence based medicine not all but that's one of the major portion okay so how you are going to re retrieve relevant information for addressing your pharmacotherapy related queries and how you are going to evaluate your treatment regimen based on the information you get from the articles and how you will use it how you are going to educate the healthcare professionals and how you are going to translate this particular information to the patient for example uh, we do have this uh, new oral anticoagulation uh, anticoagulants like uh, rivaroxaban dabigatran apixaban and nidoxaban currently uh, that's an area where i find it difficult to express the difficulty in uh, continuing this particular medication in pregnant patients so we don't have a data telling these medications are 100% safe in this this population but again we don't have any evidence to tell this these medications are going to cause some harm to the patients also so currently uh, the safest anticoagulation that can be given to a pregnant lady is parenteral anticoagulation like inoxaparin uh, which is kind of cost effective and much safer for our population so recently again one patient came where she had an unplanned pregnancy when she was on rivaroxaban so we communicated uh, we told them like we don't know whether this is going to harm your baby but uh, there is a possibility where we don't have any data so there is a possibility that your that could be some teratogenicity or some adverse events can happen during her pregnancy so if she can understand this particular uh, information it's totally okay to continue with the medication but she must know anything can happen if she can take that part or take that risk it's totally okay for them to continue this new oral anticoagulants or the safest option is inoxaparin but since it's kind of uh, injection the parenteral one uh, injecting subcutaneously twice daily is not a patient friendly medication so educating them regarding the possible adverse events giving them what all treatment options are available and uh, explaining to them like we don't know and this is the literature and this is the data we have uh, the patient will feel more comfortable in choosing a particular medication so one of our patient chose to continue the new oral anticoagulation after understanding the total 
safety as well as the risk possibilities of the risk okay so these are the areas where we can improve ourselves so how to uh, understand the literature and how to take it towards the patient that's all they are going to assess from this particular domain so the last domain is the healthcare systems as well as the population health this is like uh, 10% and regarding the previous domain uh, if you go through the feedback from the other pharmacists who passed this exam they are very clear in one thing if you can score uh, full marks in that uh, in the second domain that's evidence based medicine which you includes most of the statistics if you can score a good mark in that particular domain your chances of passing this exam is going to be very high why because uh, clinical uh, it's like it's like infinity whatever you study uh, you may have some questions which you don't know you may have some questions you have not gone through yet but the statistics part you can uh, learn thoroughly and attempting more and more questions will help you make sure that you have gone through most of the areas or most of the contents which you have to cover in that particular domain so you can give some kind of importance to that domain making sure that you attempt all the questions and if you get a good mark uh, if you can uh, if you can get all the answers right in that particular domain your chances of passing the exam is going to be very high okay this is uh, from the feedback of other pharmacists as well as my personal feedback coming to the third domain this is the healthcare systems and population health where you are going to uh, decide or you are going to plan a treatment for a population for example uh, the immunization part the vaccination how it's going to help uh, protecting our population avoiding uh, some diseases which can spread easily the very recent example being covid-19 infection so how the immunization um, immunization plays a role and assessing the risk especially the cardiovascular risk in our population how to assess when to assess and when to start them on preventive medications these are some few examples i can give from this particular domain and then utilizing the technology to promote safe and effective medication use uh, that is how how you can uh, use the utilize the technology for uh, giving the particular information for improving the health literacy of our population that's an area as an indian pharmacist that's the, one of the area which i am focusing on through education and counseling we can uh, improve the health literacy of our population it's a very simple way even without using the technology this is something practically i have seen just educating communicating with the patient can improve the health literacy just make a note of it it's for the practical purpose okay so what are other technological advancements if you can see now uh, so much of talk and uh, webinars are going on regarding artificial intelligence so uh, just keep yourself update so that you know what is happening around you uh, even if it's not practically used in india they have been using it for the past few years in us so as i said this, this is an american exam and you need to know what is happening in america so you, there is no other way but you should learn in their way so that you can think about bringing those treatment and those technologies in our country and improve our patient care okay so again the third point is like incorporating public health initiatives same thing overall it's like taking care of the population not only the individual patient but how to take care of the population what are steps you can utilize what are steps to be taken for a better population health care okay so these are the three domains the first one is the pharmacotherapy where you will be going through the clinical therapeutic approach Uh, assessing the patient assessing the therapy uh, monitoring the therapy making the changes again assessing the case and then counseling and educating the patient as well as communication with the healthcare professional second one is the evidence based medicine where we will be going through the bio statistics medical literature evaluation and how to utilize that particular data from each and every article and how you are going to take it to the bedside from paper to the bedside okay and the third one is regarding the population health so what are the expectations from a board certified pharmacotherapy specialist what are they trying to assess and what you are supposed to provide or what you, which are the areas where you should be very proficient in so you should be able to optimize the pharmacologic as well as the non pharmacologic therapy but as i told it's not just about the medications 
but even without medication what are the other treatments for example if you take a stroke patient the medications alone is not going to help them but the rehabilitation services plays a major role in their recovery that's just one example and the second thing will be a patient centered evidence based therapeutic information and interventions so if you get a patient and if you have to answer a clinical query you can't just go and tell okay i think this is much better than that you need to have some evidence based backup for your information or the information what you are giving to the healthcare professional or the patient we can just assume that this is much safer than the other one or you should not assume that this is effective than the other medication unless you have an evidence to evidence or a proof to show that particular uh, evidence or a proof to back up your answer better not to answer that question you can get take some time and you know what to look where to look and how to find that particular information that's what you are being trained in this examination when you are preparing so you place that search criteria and get the relevant information from the published articles or the guidelines and share that with the healthcare professional or the physician and educate it to the patient so that you will be having a better treatment plan for them functioning as a member of interprofessional team so how we are going to communicate with other healthcare professionals uh, regarding the patient care so how we are planning the treatment and how we are going to contribute it what other changes can be made how you will express this particular idea to other healthcare professional in your team and how we are going to take the information what they are going to give okay so it's kind of a teamwork and we are part of that team so the interlinking or mingling and the communication with other hcps are also an important uh, thing which you have to maintain throughout your career so uh, when you prepare for this particular exam they have a separate chapter uh, in accp where they mention regarding the communication part and they have given it beautifully uh, it's very nice to see that they do have a systematic approach for each and every uh, steps they take during the patient care something which we do not uh, use it regularly uh, but since i had an opportunity for doing my internship for two months in us uh, the learning part was kind of uh, better for me because whatever i saw i was kind of reading it in a book and i could correlated so the two months of internship helped me a lot in this preparation and the next one is collaborating with an interprofessional team so it's like how to give a good quality care and a safer treatment for our patient uh, it all requires as i told it all requires a teamwork uh, ourselves we cannot decide a treatment regimen for a patient uh, as a single person it requires lots of contribution uh, it requires lots of lots of communication and we need to know what are the pros and cons of the treatment from other person's perspective also and you need to back up your information with evidence based medicine so uh, what is the impact of the certification as i told you are going to improve your quality of care you are going to have a good amount of knowledge and all your perspective it's going to have a change a big change in your perspective uh, towards the patient care okay whatever you are practicing now uh, it lacks a lot of uh, quality and knowledge and you have to improve it uh, maybe reading books and going through the articles will help you for sure but this particular certification will take you to a better level okay and of course once you have the certification you are kind of recognized in that particular area in that specialty and it will make you stand out of the crowd so you will be having something unique you will be seen as a unique person so uh, it feels like if you are certified in uh, ambulatory care so you will be having a better quality compared to the other practicing pharmacists who doesn't have the certification that's why they are bringing it as a gold standard for analyzing the quality of a practicing pharmacist so how i prepared for this examination as i told i utilized the accp as well as the high yield med review uh, if you want to have an in depth learning i'll prefer high yield med review uh, accp has an exam oriented and an exam point of view approach 
uh, that's my experience or that's my feedback uh, comparing these two preparatory courses but acp does have a mock exam where you can uh, go through it for like once you complete learning or complete your content preparation you can just get that mock exam and try uh, sitting for uh, like 4 uh, to 4 and a half hours time 175 questions for 4 to 4 and a half hours time keep a timer and just see how you will be able to attempt those questions and with that mark you can know where you are standing you place that particular mock exam for you to understand which areas you are lacking and you can focus more uh, in that areas before going for the main exam okay uh, regarding the high yield med review it's very comprehensive it's very lengthy but uh, dr bustai who is giving you the majority of the online lectures he is going to start from the anatomy physiology all the basics he will first explain the whole basics and then only he will get into the disease as well as the pharmacotherapy and he also provides a good number of uh, questions mcqs uh, attempting the mcqs before going for the examination is very important because as i told you it's a different thing and unless you have a good practice with these mcqs it's going to be really tough just learning the content just learning the treatment and going through all the guidelines will not help you pass this exam unless you have the knack unless you know how to approach the question it's going to be very tough for you okay so other than these preparatory courses you have to go through the guidelines uh, because uh, every year one or the other disease they'll be bringing out new guideline updates and most of the guidelines are like american only because since this is an american exam we are supposed to follow the american guidelines and these preparatory courses will give you the references to which guidelines will be preferred for you in case if there are two or three guidelines and during my preparation i had the opportunity to present small topics during my working hours so my doctor gave me uh, he was really supportive and he gave me some time so that we had small discussions uh, small topics were presented and including the guidelines where we used to uh, communicate discuss practically apply to our patient and while selecting the medication uh, whatever i learned for this exam i used to discuss it with my doctor i used to practically apply it in my patients and that all gave me a good learning experience also so during the clinical rounds i had these discussions regarding the do- dose adjustment uh, the adverse events which we have to monitor and what all investigations we have to do for the patient based on their medication and uh, what counseling or education i must give them and what uh, new information i could pass on to my doctor all these small discussions helped me memorize uh, all the points which i learned so it was kind of uh, not only learning myself but through discussions and practical application uh, i had uh, i was able to prepare it very nicely okay so whatever points i learned from for each and every medicine i used to educate my patients even though it was kind of complicated for them i used to uh, narrate it like a story and i used to tell them how the body will react to the medication and what the medication will be doing to our body for example what you expect from a diuretic uh, how frequently they'll have to pass urine and why we are making them to flush out the extra fluid and what benefit it will give it to the patient so all the small explanations gave a good satisfaction for the patient and i was happy that i could explain it in a very simple way and it helped me learn more memorize more and it was like all working days were kind of learning time for me and of course uh, whenever my juniors or someone uh, whether anyone from the medical profession whenever they joined our team for posting or internship or observership uh, i used to share my knowledge whatever i learned that day morning or in that week if something related to that happened in my patient i used to share my knowledge to them so that again it made i made small discussions with them and i told them how we'll be classifying the disease and based on the classification how i'll be selecting my medication so how i'll plan a treatment for this particular patient uh, technically practically i was utilizing all what i learned in my patient which helped me learn in a better way okay 
and of course mcqs practice mcqs daily okay uh, even 5 mcqs per day will be a good number so when you have a continuous flow with these mcqs uh, the approach towards these questions will be stuck in your mind so whenever you see a question you will be kind of training yourself how to approach which clues you have to make a note of uh, how to find the right answer from the options given the training with mcqs uh, is a very good thing and that's the best thing i liked with hym the high yield med review they had a good number of mcqs and it's a fantastic way they have explained how they have explained the answers how to select the answer as i told two or three answers may look alike you'll feel like all the three answers are right how to choose so they will help you to go through these questions identify the important points and how to rule out or how to rule in the answers how to select the best answer for that particular question they have done a very good job in their course so of course um, high yield med review gave me a good uh, basics it was kind of brushing up my entire pharmd curriculum uh, because whatever required pharmacologic as well as non pharmacologic treatment options were also discussed how to utilize the guideline information how to select from the recommendation uh, which all recommendations can be avoided and what are the practical difficulties in utilizing the evidence based medicine all these topics were discussed throughout the lectures by dr bustai and it's a totally different experience okay uh, i'll keep on going if i start telling about high yield med review so i'll give you some opportunity to do that uh, it's like uh, so before going to the slide let me introduce dr anthony j bustai he is the ceo of high yield med review and when i posted regarding this webinar he volunteered and he told me like he is happy to help and sponsor the indian pharmacists who are preparing for the board certification and so they are willing to give away a coupon a discount coupon so whichever specialty you are planning to if you purchase a course from their site they are happy to give a 20% discount coupon uh, including whichever order you take it means like for each and every specialty they have different packages you can purchase either the question bank alone or you can get the online lectures with the question bank so they have different packages uh, including the question bank or the online lectures or it's like the duration so you can get it for one month three months six months or one year and uh, it totally depends on your requirement so how long you want to prepare Uh, or you just whether you want the question bank alone for practicing the mcqs uh, whichever package you are planning to purchase you are going to get a 20% discount okay so they just wanted to help the indian pharmacists uh, when i tried purchasing this particular course i explained the difficulty the financial part how we are struggling uh, with this profession and my desire to learn more and the feedback i received from other board certified pharmacists and how much i wanted to proceed with this uh, particular course and they were kind enough to give me uh, the discount and when he volunteered telling that he wanted to sponsor i mentioned how they helped me and so they told like okay they'll go with the 20% discount coupon they initially were, they started with just a discussion of discount but when i explained my uh experience with them and how they helped me they told they are ready to give the same discount for all the indian pharmacists okay so don't miss this chance uh only thing they can provide is a hard copy they can't send the books internationally so everything will be available uh, as an online version and they have given an expiry that it's like you can purchase it till jan 15 okay so i strongly recommend this if you want you can do your research in google and just see how others felt regarding this particular course while they prepared for the bcps so maybe i'll i'll give the mic to manush kumar and i'll start taking up some questions thank you so much dr anita that was so comprehensive it was like a complete 360 degree uh, overview of bcps uh, you could sh stop sharing dr anita no problem and then we'll continue yeah. But if you want me to do that, 
I'll do this. Yeah, can you please stop sharing? I don't know. Oh, don't don't worry. I'll do it from my end. Just give me one okay. second. Okay. Yes. So maybe I saw the thing. Have you stopped it, or should I do it? I'll I'll just stop this sharing. Yeah, I've just stopped it. Yeah, perfect. So thank you so much, Dr. Anita, for that uh, 360 degree overview that you gave for BCPS and uh, you know different advantages that you shared uh, for doing um, BCPS to our pharmacy professionals. I'm sure the practical pointers that you shared today, along with your you know invaluable experience, this will never get uh, this other. Otherwise, the participants will never get this kind of experience, right? To interact, will surely inspire a lot of pharmacy professionals and. help them to make a difference in the current healthcare system we always have this complaining mind we always keep complaining that this is not good that is not good right so now there is a chance for all these pharmacists to make a difference and see how they can make a you know positive uh, approach and positive uh, advantage take the advantage of bcps and become a create some difference in the profession so i think this is going to help them a lot and one of the important point that you mentioned was uh, the, about the health literacy so i have been a medical writer myself and i see a lot of patients struggling with this information of course google gives everything online but uh, majority of them they don't know how to differentiate the misinformation and the authentic information so the filtering of information remains a major challenge for most of the pharmacy uh, patients right and i think uh, uh, pharmacists being the you know first point of contact for most of the patients in india they can really make a difference here and as you rightly said uh, you know told that health creating this health literacy as a platform uh, by all these pharmacy professionals if you can you know come if you can join hands together all of us and then start creating some good authentic information for the patients in different languages i think that is something going to help a lot in you know creating a better healthcare for all the indian pharmacy people and also the patients in general so thank you so much for that wonderful uh, information and i'm i will take up some questions from participants so participants all you have to do is raise your virtual hand on zoom and if you are watching us on youtube you can put the questions on the chat box and i'll read the questions for you so there is a condition if you are asking the questions on zoom Uh, if you want you can also switch on the video because we would like to see you and then dr neeta would love to interact with you when you are asking the question to her so preeti as go on you can ask the question if you want you can also switch on the video preeti you can ask the question how much the cost for the fee preeti sarathi I think voice is breaking, but then uh, I could hear that she's she she's asking about the cost of the course. Preeti, is that right? Yes, no. Yes. Okay, I'll just answer that question because I am sure that many of them will be asking the same thing. So, if you uh, the cost. Uh, depends on how uh, depends on the duration as well as whether you are selecting the question bank alone or is it a combination of the online lectures with the question bank so uh, it will start from around 300 to 400 dollars for sure and it can go up to uh, 500 590 range okay so if you try converting it into the indian inr it's going to cost you around 40 to 50000 so with this discount you are going to get around uh, A minimum of kind of ten thousand range of discount will be received, and uh, I am sure it's a big difference in financially in our point of view. So your requirement decides the cost which we have to bear. So yeah. whether you are planning to get any other course or you are totally going to depend on HYMR or whether you want to take any other courses from the ACCP, ASHP, but I am sure they all are costly, much costlier than this one. so cost effective wise uh, i'll prefer this discount wise also i'll again prefer the same thing yeah and another thing i would like to add a point here dr anita see the requirement of the course totally depend on the candidate also right so let's say if i don't know anything then i'll rather go for the entire package but if i feel i have done my you know strength and weakness analysis and if i know i know that okay i just want to brush up the subject then probably i just take the mcqs and go for it right 
so it totally yeah. depends yeah if you try answering the mcqs you will get to know whether you have to learn more whether your uh, study approach was good enough for this exam or not so maybe getting a one month question bank and trying all the questions from each and every specialty is one way and then you can start studying but i don't know how much practically it will help you i did that uh, during my initial phase uh, with so many uh, mcqs which were available in google for free and then i understood uh, this is not going to work without learning so i started uh, going through the accp review as i told but again the word review you need to make sure that you understand the word review it's something like uh, you know and then you are reviewing it okay so if you don't know it's not a review it's like you are reading something without much knowledge of the basics absolutely so after going through the accp review that's what which made me feel so bad that i'm not strong in my basics and Absolutely. for that search during that further learning part when i went through the other person's feedback uh, i just thought okay i'll it's a kind of investing in yourself okay even though it's a huge amount uh, i just wanted to learn so it's not like you're wasting your money uh, you're utilizing it for your education for improving your knowledge uh, with which is like a lifelong thing it doesn't have an expiry so uh, i never thought it as something even though it's a burden i never felt i just wasted my money okay it's a real investment in yourself absolutely i totally agree with you so real investment in yourself is the game changer for everything in the healthcare system right so dr priyanshi you are you are the next uh, go on you can ask the question dr priyanshi okay thank you so much uh, thank you so much for the session first of all and uh, it was really great session we uh, learned so many new things and where we can uh, excel ourselves uh, for that uh, thank you so much for that and my question to you ma'am is uh, uh, are you going to excel your career in india uh, now or in us first yeah the just a horse story initially i did this for giving a better patient care for my people for the indian population uh, right now i am not thinking about uh, any work in abroad if i get an opportunity for again another internship or observership or further training i uh, will be open to that but working part i want to be with my people that's what that's kind of inspiring me to learn more and get the certification that's why i went ahead for this uh, that's why i invested in myself even though i had the financial difficulty the financial burden was too much but over this period of time uh, since my people the indian population they motivated me their difficulties their lack of health literacy so much issues in the healthcare so all these part all these factors uh, in a cumulative way help me learn as i told you throughout my learning i was utilizing the communication and education part so uh, if you go abroad i think i am just one among them but in india this is an area where you can explore yourself bring in new changes and this is the area where you will you are going to get a good recognition okay you are going to do yeah. something new so if you stay here it's going to be a career change for yourself that's what i feel so so many factors for me to take a decision on practicing in india itself okay. absolutely that's really that great so ma'am that's really great to listen ma'am because uh, till till now whatever i have listened is like uh, i'll go to abroad and will uh, have a career at like that so it's really great that you have you want to serve here so ma'am i have one more question uh, regard uh, in continuation of this can i just yeah, go on, minute, just a minute just okay. to mention we we should not forget that india is a developing country so yeah. more and more opportunities are on the way my seniors they struggled a lot in creating vacancies in different hospitals i know them personally and i know how much they uh, worked hard to bring in those vacancies and opportunities even though some of them went abroad because of their personal issues but they opened up so many uh, opportunity and still till now uh, the vacancies are growing actually 
so yeah. there are so many hospitals being opened and uh, even there are some hospitals who doesn't have even one clinical pharmacist so we have uh, a lot to explore a lot of clinical pharmacists are awaited in this country and we have to utilize it actually instead of leaving this country we have to be here utilize the opportunity uh, bring up our profession and if financial part is a difficulty uh, we have to raise the voice unless we bring it out uh, the people who have to take a decision will not know regarding this so let's join our hands together let's bring up this issue let them know and just wait and see i'm sure this is going to be a game changer and we will receive what we deserve okay absolutely well said uh, dr anita and i have you know i personally interact with a lot of doctors and i see a lot of mindset change these days they are well accepting the clinical pharmacists and of course they want people with knowledge and if you have the right knowledge and if you have the right kind of attitude then the doctors are very much willing to interact with you and you know at the end of the day it is helping the patients to recover from their disease and you know benefit from the entire system right so if you are able to add value there then definitely they'll welcome you uh, with open hands so please learn and you know stand out of the crowd you know out of the crowd you have to stand out you cannot be one among everything one among everybody uh, certificates everyone gets uh, you know knowledge and skills is something that everyone is looking for and if you have the right kind of skills then definitely it is uh, accepted today so don't worry just keep concentrating and focusing on your growth yeah so thank I'm you doctor sure. yeah the physicians are looking forward for person or people who are having good knowledge and now even though still there are some difficulties for them to accept us uh maybe some misunderstanding of like we are equivalent to them nowhere we are equivalent to them and yeah. we are not in a position to uh, diagnose or take care of a patient ourselves without the help of a physician we are part of the healthcare team Absolutely. and we have to respect others and of course they have to accept us but give them some time because we are yet to establish ourselves uh when i went to us they told me Uh, they had the same difficulties and struggles almost 10 to 20 years back since they were a fast growing country the acceptance and everything happened so fast and they got this particular clinical pharmacy thing established there our country requires some more time just give it some time and we are here for you people and we are taking those steps and making the changes so just uh, wait and see the change will come okay yeah so when we are taking the baby steps you know a majority of the cases what happens is we go to the physicians and tell them that hey we have we can write doctor and now i want a prescription right right so i'm sure dr anita can correlate this very well and this is something a very wrong way of interacting with doctors right uh, you we cannot compete uh, as we rightly dr anita said already we cannot compete with them given the kind of knowledge and skills we have let's utilize those skills and knowledge first for the patient care let's make that difference let that let's take that first step and then you know as the time passes as the time uh, you know comes in our favor then definitely we can have more rights and more uh, you know opportunities coming on the way so thank you dr anita and thank you uh, dr priyanshi for taking that question ritesh you are next to go we has one more question we just interfered in between priyanshi Yes, Priyanshi. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, your words were very much motivational, and I, I think uh, students or, or professionals who are listening to you have lots of motivation for the clinical pharmacy by your words. Thank you so much for that. And my que- uh, another question is just a scenario which currently I'm uh, lo- looking. Actually, half of the answer I got from you, but I'm just sharing one thing uh, and one question that is. uh currently uh, in indian scenario many of the hospitals uh, and even the uh, those hospitals who uh, who have family interns and family students are currently working they are also not having clinical pharmacist post so how uh, we can think about this certification and we, we can ex- uh, excel our career in india so it's little uh, like opposite thing are happening so half of the answer i got and anything else if you want to add actually uh, you you have to show a minimum number of years in your clinical experience for the certification so if you feel like one one hospital is not providing you an opportunity 
but look for another hospital you have to find a way out uh, you can't sit thinking the my own hospital is not providing me a career opportunity that's kind of sad actually but again you have to come out of it and you have to find a way out yourself so as i told there are many other hospitals uh, which have not yet started this particular uh, clinical pharmacy posting so what you can do is uh, like what all what we all did you can just go to the hospital meet the head of the hospital talk to them tell them what you are how you are trained what you are trained for what you can do how we can make a change in the patient care just try communicating with them uh, it might it might help them understand what you are and it might help them bring in uh, a minimum of two or three clinical pharmacy postings in that hospital so once you uh, start even a single vacancy that's more than enough once they see you working and once they see your input and outcome they'll be willing to take more and more cps and that's a change you can bring in yourself okay so right. don't right. think right. that your hospital is not giving you an opportunity i so not yeah not only my hospital actually i have seen this scenario in many of the hospitals which are having i'm not saying uh, tech, talking about those hospitals who are not not aware of pharmd or clinical pharmacy things but hospitals who are already having pharmd or clinical pharmacy students or uh, uh, who are have uh, who have tie up with the uh, pharmd colleges uh, they are also not having this post and this is something where we are not having actual clinical pharmacy exposure we are lacking here like pharmacist is not a uh, teaching pharmacist we have to taught from the clinicians and this is the thing where i felt we are like like in india yeah like uh, the new pharmd graduates they are taking up the clinical teaching post and i have seen in many colleges they are coming for the ward rounds with the students and they are guiding their people also so the change is coming slowly okay since okay. Uh, i am the third batch of pharmd in india the regular pharmd and we had our own struggles and as i mentioned in the first uh, session uh, it was like uh, i learned a lot out of the syllabus i was not just preparing for my exam uh, because i wanted to know why this medication is being chosen what is happening in this particular disease especially the infection part uh, so many antibiotics and so many diseases and what is the criteria for selecting this particular antibiotic that really uh, was kind of very difficult for me so when i learned the basics attempting each and every question was very easy for me during my second and third year exam that's what i am telling so you have to put in some effort yourself you can't totally depend on someone else and just think about it just try to find a solution yourself that's the best way you can come out okay yeah that's really right yeah thank you so much thank, thank you thank you priyanshi and thank you dr anita so we'll take some thank more questions the- Yeah, we'll take some more questions. Uh, Ritesh, you are next. Go on and ask. Thank you, Mr. Manoj and Dr. Anita, for the wonderful session. I'm pretty sure a lot of people over here will be benefiting from this entire session with all your knowledge and experience that you have shared. So, thanks once again for that. Um, just a little bit background about me. I've done my PharmD as well, and I graduated in 2017. and post my pharmd i have done a residency program in clinical pharmacy and oncology for two years addition so okay. uh, residency program uh, in oncology so we had to deal with 70% of patient care and 5% in research and around 15% in teaching and uh, 10% in practice management so you said that there's a basic requirement of few years of working in a clinical scenario um in a particular specialization right so yeah. i just want to know will this residency program of 2 years that i've done which is uh, a clinical pharmacy background itself but in oncology that is where my specialization is and that's where my area of interest is will that be considered and will that be taken into account if i have to apply for this and go ahead with this uh, can i know where you have done your residency is it from jss or a different institution yes i did my pharmd as well as residency in jss mysore Yeah, if I am right, uh, to my knowledge, uh, your residency has been accredited by the ACPE. 
the farm d has been accredited by acp yes and uh, the residency program has been uh, designed as per the ashp guidelines yeah so i am not sure regarding that part uh, but the pharmacotherapy specialty requires 3 years of clinical experience where 50 percentage of your time has been allotted to according to their content outline okay and yes. if you are planning for an oncology uh, i don't know exactly what is the eligibility requirement for oncology specialty certification so maybe you will have to go through it but again if they are asking for a 3 to 4 years of clinical experience uh, in us the residency is considered as one of the eligibility after which they can go for the certification exam so they are trying to equate the residential res, residency teaching with the three years of clinical experience in india so i am not sure regarding whether the two year residency in india will be considered the same as the residency what they are giving in us maybe you can talk to the board of pharmacy specialty regarding this and they will be in a better position to answer this question i'm really sorry but i don't know maybe no one asked me this before or else i would have spoken to them directly not a problem not a doctor problem. it's so, not a doctor, problem uh, doctor uh, ritesh if you can uh, reconnect with me later on uh, maybe after the session uh, i'll connect with you somebody uh, from some uh, somebody from the us and you can take the discussion from them with them Definitely. Actually, i think you are supposed to contact the board of pharmacy specialty regarding this uh, because they are the ones who Uh, who will verify your documentation and tell whether you are eligible for this examination or not so uh, manoj if you can connect with someone yeah i'll do that you. so bcp uh, bcp definitely you can interact but then i'll uh, connect with your very senior pharmacist from the us you can interact with him or her and then uh, maybe after the discussion whatever you feel you can plan accordingly okay yeah that will be very helpful thank you so yeah. much yeah no problem ritesh thank you so anybody else yes dr rahul you are next go on uh, hello am i audible yes loud and clear dr rahul go on yeah uh, thank you uh, good evening ma'am and uh, it was a wonderful section I really benefited and thank you mr manoj kumar for hosting this i have a few questions and uh, badly i'm going to the first one I would like to know about the reaccreditation of the BCP. Once if we procure this BCP, if say it's a critical care, okay, and what will be the criteria? I uh, mean, how many year validity do we have with this degree? And then after, if there is a validity for say three to four years, and what will be the next thing that we need to do for the reaccreditation? Ah. Uh... can you just repeat the question once again uh, you are not that audible to me rahul can you be little louder uh, please okay ju- just just um, a yeah little bit yeah. louder even i have put my volume to the max <laughs> not uh, I, I, am i audible now you are audible actually but uh, i didn't get the question no. right J- just a minute Oh, I got this part. Like, uh, what about now? Yeah, yeah. Just repeat the question. I will let you know. Pardon? Just repeat the question. I will let yeah, you yes. know. Uh, uh, it's just nothing. It's about the reaccreditation of the BCP. So if if says if we had procured a certification of a critical care, okay. okay. Then what will be the criteria for after means I mean the validity? What I am talking about. so okay. once if says if critical care have a validity of 4 years and once it get over what will be the next step that we need to do okay so after the certification exam your certification will be valid for next 7 years hello can you hear me rahul um dr rahul we can hear you dr nita you please continue okay so the validity for uh, the certification exams are seven years at least for pharmacotherapy it's seven years and if i am right it's the same for all other certification so during this seven year period we are supposed to uh, uh, go through some continuing pharmacy education programs we have to gain a 120 hours of 
uh, attending base education program and or the alternate is we have to undergo a recertification exam after 7 years i am not sure regarding whether both these are required for the recertification from my understanding it's either one uh, continuing pharmacy education 120 hours or the recertification exam i am yet to explore that part uh, because i have not gone through further details but a recertification examination is there for sure after 7 years and you have to prepare for that again Uh, Dr. Raul, I hope we and uh, Dr. Anita answered that question. Uh, you have not raised your hand, so I can't see you, anyways. Okay, Dr. Anita, that's perfectly fine. And in case Dr. Raul, you have some more questions, you can please reconnect with Dr. Anita later on on LinkedIn and ask your questions. Okay, and I, for all the participants who are attending the session, I'll be sharing the LinkedIn link profile link of Dr. Anita, so you can connect with her later on. and whenever she is free she'll reply to your messages she is not free most of the time and whenever she'll be free she'll get some time she'll interact with you so nichita you are next uh, you can ask the question dr nichita dr nichita you can unmute hello hello good evening good evening both of you it was a nice session that you have done it was very helpful and knowledgeable also uh my question is uh, for dr anita ma'am actually uh, we are not supposed to know that actual form d is what how we will get into it so we have uh, sometimes we feel like we wasted our time or something like that but now we can after starting working we are realizing that it is most important that it is, it is equal to like helping the patient care improving the patient care so my question is hymr if we are uh, that what you have suggested that uh, preparatory course will be helpful even though we have we don't have strong basics yeah because dr bastai starts from the basics so that's the part where i like the hymr course uh, for example if you go through cardiology uh, atrial fibrillation or the arrhythmia is kind of tough very tough even if you understand the i think understanding atrial fibrillation is much easier than understanding the pharmacotherapeutic options for af i i went through that lecture maybe more than five times if i am not wrong okay. it's a lengthy one uh, but still the disease was much better for me after learn uh, going through it one or two times but the pharmacotherapy i went through it again and again and i am sure i even remember during my second year that uh, i had no idea what i should learn from this uh, anti arrhythmic medication when to choose this particular medication in what condition what rhythm abnormality how to diagnose it which medicine will help in that particular condition this was a great uh, kind of gray area for me even after going through the accp i knew this is this and this is particular medication to be given for this disease but how will you understand which disease and see there was some area where i was lacking the whole basic concept all this was cleared once i went through the hymr even though maybe i am having a difficulty in grasping the points easily uh, maybe i require some multiple times of study but at least after going through dr bastai's lecture it made very easy for me okay similarly so many other diseases which i had difficulty like uh, pulmonology which i mentioned earlier and a uh, few other areas i don't remember because too many areas for me so uh, after going through the hymr lecture i am sure i had a better understanding as i told accp it's a review so unless you know the beginning it's very difficult for it to review it okay so that's the whole thing you have to understand and for the exam knowing the foundation is very important without that uh, you there is a possibility that you will miss some important clues in the exam uh, in the question actually yeah ma'am thank you it was very helpful and uh, yeah thank you ma'am thank you nichita dr nichita and thank you dr anita and i would just add few points here to your overall discussion dr anita so dr nichita very rightly pointed out that uh, you know during the initial days we are not told see we are not here to comment on how the whole syllabus and other things are designed but it is you know our responsibility that whatever course we do 
we have to learn the basics and most of the time what we do uh, during our b farm or m farm i have done my m farm so i you know i'll tell my experience when we were doing our b farm and m farm we are always you know of course i did from government college of pharmacy so we had the access to the entire library and we had access to all the books but nowadays when i see the situation the situation is different the students uh, go for the small guides and the books just to pass the exams and this is not going to help because there is a bigger exam after the actual exam right uh, after the degree certificate that we get and for in our case that does not work because we work in industry and we do something else but in your case when you are interacting with patients and directly with doctors your knowledge and the skills are very very important so you cannot rely on those shortcuts that we did for our b farm and m farm uh, and somehow we managed the lives but now that is not possible right so when you are doing your farm d uh, you know to all the farm days here uh, please study well and please take care of all the basics don't rely on the small shortcuts and books go for the foreign author books and the international uh, publishers books they are very very good uh, you know they are well designed and they have all the basics uh, in that those books right so if you follow the basics then you know once you complete your farm d then you don't have to take the entire course maybe maybe if you just take the mcqs and just brush up your knowledge that should be fine right so i hope i i was able to add some points there i would like to add on some few points uh, it's not just the certification exam there are people who have passed fpge and the pebc exam from canada so if you ask them again they are going through the whole farm d syllabus again and again for attending the same exam so then yeah. they uh, know they came to know like they are lacking some again the basics only they had to go through it again and it's like passing the farm d exam is much easier but after coming out of the farm d <laughs> the real thing is happening so whether you start practicing as a clinical pharmacist or whether you want to go abroad and uh, pass all these exams uh, everywhere your basics is very important and you need to know what you learn and if you learn it in an exam point of view that send of the story again you can have a re farm d learning after graduating okay so Absolutely. just decide yourself which one is easy yeah so the easier is to do the basics during the course work and then uh, apply those knowledge whatever you have gained uh, as a practical scenario as and when you interact with the patient so you are basically applying the whole basics into the you know practical scenario when you are interacting with the patient so that becomes easier i feel rather than you know once you complete uh, farm d and then again you have to go for the entire syllabus whatever you have learned that is definitely not going to help and that is definitely not advisable also you know it is very very difficult i know couple of farm d's who are right now struggling and you know they have just completed they have done they have got very good percentage but now right now they are struggling with uh, several internships and exams and you know when they are interacting with doctors it, it just takes few minutes of interaction uh, for the doctor to know the depth of our knowledge right so it is good to have that knowledge uh, you know gained during the graduation or masters itself rather than you know once the question comes in and you go and look for the resources to learn that is not going to help us so thank you so much dr anita for that and we'll take one last question from the you know participants dr rahul uh, you can ask the question dr rahul yeah uh, am i audible now yes okay. yeah uh, sorry for the last time no uh, actually it was a wonderful section and it is really benefited and thank you uh, mr manoj for hosting it and uh, we well, are going to my first question uh, what about the re accreditation criteria for this bcp if once if the validity got over so what's the next step we need to do uh it's like if you want to continue your certification you can take a re certification exam if not so, um, yeah uh, please go ahead sorry to interrupt it's okay sir without the re certification you are no longer a board certified pharmacotherapy specialist that's all uh so uh, uh, how much will be the validity like in a years 7 years 7 years oh, yeah. okay okay thank you and the uh, another one 
is you were talking about that ai application in hospital settings so uh, can you just uh, name some of those application levels with ai if possible yeah, really sorry <laughs> but i have zero idea about this particular field i am sure manas will have some input yeah. Dr Rahul you connect with me later on uh, we i'll yeah. share uh, share with you some resources on technology and ai no problem okay sure so, sure if you can just give a brief idea regarding that i am yeah, sure so that. yeah a lot of uh, see right now i'll tell you the example of couple of hospitals in bangalore what they are doing i'll not mm-hmm. name the hospitals because i was uh, directly or indirectly associated with couple of them so uh, some of the hospitals what they have done is they have utilized the uh, you know drug database and they have integrated with the patient care so what are really happens is when a doctor prescribes a medication the doctor is able to see the past history of the medication to uh, that was given to the patient and the system gives a prompt whether that particular the new prescription the doctor is prescribing is in line with that prescription or not that is number one trick then the second thing that trigger that the database or the system gives is what kind of drug interactions the uh, drug combination might have so it is you know using the technology the healthcare professionals are giving better service and of course when with this entire knowledge given to the patients and the pharmacists the pharmacists are able to guide the patients in a much better way so this is just one example and the second example can be you know doing the literature search right now we have a lot of databases that we use for literature search you know and we get a very valid information right now we have filters through which we can access last 5 years information last 10 years information last 20 years information and then use it for the patient care and of course it depends on our knowledge that we have we can always utilize that information for good or bad and for the better patient care right so these are some of the examples there are a lot of apps and uh, websites and tools that uh, pharmacists and doctors are using these days which is definitely going to add a lot of value in the patient care okay so if you want more let's connect later on we can discuss and then i'll also share with you some of the resources there are a lot of companies which are working on this uh, i know one pharmdi also is working in this area in the artificial intelligence area and he is doing a wonderful job okay so perfect thank you dr rahul for asking that thank and thank you dr neeta for answering that question so we'll take some questions from the chat box uh, on zoom and also one or two questions from youtube so one question uh, from youtube i'll take is you know uh, his name is selvan he says ma'am could you help us uh, and provide some internship under your guidance guidance for internship yeah be with the patient spend more time with your patient communicate with your patient just know their difficulty uh, you can start from whether they have received the treatment for their particular complaint okay they must have come for some headache and we must have diagnosed some flu and you might be starting him on some antiviral but the patient will be suffering from headache so it's like you are treating for your satisfaction but the patient feels like he has not received any treatment okay these simple things matter to the patient so unless you focus on the patient unless you treat the patient uh, it's going to be difficult for you because it's all the perception of the patient whether he received he or she received the treatment or not okay unless you communicate and spend time with them you are not going to uh, you are not going to have the monitoring the assessment of the treatment effectiveness whether the patient is safe or not you are not going to identify any adverse events you are not going to know whether you are doing the right thing for the patient okay it's like treating the lab reports and uh, documentation part uh, rather than treating the patient themselves so be with the patient communicate with the patient spend more time that's the first thing i want to tell you second thing whenever you see a case even working on a single case for a day is more than sufficient uh, go through uh, the depth of each and every point each and every problem of the patient see what disease they are having and once they have a diagnosis go through it make sure that you have learned everything about the diagnosis at least the basic things required and if you can go through the guidelines and the treatment recommendations for that disease make a note of it a very brief short note so daily learning one disease and the treatment approach or learning at least one medication for a day 
with all the mechanism adverse events monitoring parameters counseling points education for both patients caregivers as well as the uh, include the healthcare professionals also uh, i'm not telling just about uh, the bisphosphonates or the oral anticoagulation but even the paracetamol may be having some important counseling points which you may not know unless you start referring okay use your own books like uh, our joseph t dipro for pharmacotherapy or the pharmacological textbooks like goodman kilman or focus on some clinical pharmacology books which will give you some clinically relevant information regarding the medicine rather than uh, going through the t half and duration alone okay don't just pass your internship with the knowledge of nausea vomiting as adverse event for all the medication okay so just learn either a disease or a single medication a day and utilize your time spend it with your patient do good uh, learning uh, plan have a good plan for your studies and uh, once you are almost completing your internship you must be having a book with all the daily notes and just refreshing that alone will help you do better patient care when you start your practice yeah. absolutely dr anita well said thank you so much for that and selvan i hope uh, we dr anita answered your question and of course for more you can always reconnect with dr anita on linkedin and discuss with her so there is one question from jose and i think that is that that will be one question that will be there in the minds of many of the pharmacy professionals so her question is ma'am which specialty area requires the intervention of a clinical pharmacist so that we can specialize in that area from our internship period itself okay so each and every specialty requires your service and the specialty which you want depends totally on your interest okay so you can utilize this internship by going to various departments and identify yourself which area is the best for you uh, each and every area has its own pros and cons more than the cons the demand or the requirement varies among each specialty okay so if you take like critical care versus neurology something which i can which you can easily understand critical care involves a more of like uh, identifying the right dose because most of the patients will be having some amount of renal impairment or hepatic impairment and there will be multiple comorbidities so many parenteral infusions going on which all can be given together the incompatibilities the drug interaction part and whether this particular uh, addition of the new medication is going to worsen the current condition of the patient so many aspects to be looked into but most of the patients will be intubated inside an icu so your communication part the communication to the patient may not be uh, that active in a icu so if you are someone who want to uh, interact with the patient i am not sure how much the icu area is going to help you it's not like all the patients are intubated there will be some patients uh, but again the compared to other areas the interaction part will be comparatively less in icu if you take neurology that's uh, where i am working uh, majority of my interventions are improving the health literacy to make it very short it's like i am counseling my patients regarding the medication i am educating them regarding the disease why because stroke is one of the common disease which we face or the most uh, commonly seen disease in our world so regarding stroke it's something which has to be prevented the recurrence of stroke should be prevented and that can be done only with good medication adherence and a good control of the risk factors so unless the patient has been educated regarding this part they are not going to continue their medication because uh, stroke is something similar to a cardiac arrest or a myocardial infarction it's a same heart attack which is happening inside the brain so we call it as a brain attack that's how i educate my patients but when a patient has an mi it's something uh, in relation to their life either they can lose their life or they just come back and then they are worried about a next attack which might take even their life but if you look into the stroke part it's something which will cause a great disability it may uh, result in a one side weakness uh, which will affect your quality of life so dealing with the disability will be one part which i have to talk to them Uh, the post stroke depression has a significant role in their improvement so unless they are given an assurance like uh, how important rehabilitation is in their recovery 
they may not feel like continuing their medication also because in their mind it will be like taking these anti platelet agents are going to help them recover from their disability so making them understand the concept that anti platelet medications are given for prevention of another event and the rehabilitation part is the only thing which is going to help them with improvement in their weakness that particular concept uh, making them understand this is a very tough job okay i have patients coming back there are two different situation the patient is not getting any improvement with their weakness and they are stopping medicine because the medicine is not helping them and another set of patients there they get total recovery and they feel like why should i have the medicine because i have recovered from whatever issues i have so uh, in my patients education and counseling plays a major role and that's the main intervention which i am doing in my patient rather than going for the dose adjustments which i see rarely because i don't get renal impairment cases frequently uh, or some patients who come with some infection where they require some antibiotic these are a very uh, rare or kind of comparatively low number of cases and most of the time my intervention is uh, stuck with the counseling and education part so depending on the specialty and the kind of work you are doing the interventions will vary okay if you go into oncology it is full and full medication all the medicines come with a list of side effects and you know that the patient is going to suffer from one or the other side effect so knowing the side effects and counseling them telling them when to come back and uh, what kind of symptoms they might have when to meet us in an emergency basis and when not to panic all these uh, small information will help the patient to have a better life you know without any anxiety not stressing themselves waiting for a symptom uh, to identify an adverse event all this uh, hurry bury things can be avoided just through a small counseling session okay so to me counseling and education is the biggest intervention in my area absolutely dr anita and i think the health literacy part is something that we have we all have to collectively do something about and the health literacy is something that we don't have to focus only in english obviously it has to be in the local language because the patients always uh, you know want the information to come to them in their local mother tongue or the local language so i think all of us can uh, join hands there and start something on this area and i'm i'm I'll, i'd love to participate in any such activity if any one of you are doing something about it so thank you dr anita for that uh, note and thank you everyone for asking that question we'll take one last question and i i see that question very very important and i'm sure for all the farmdies who are especially you know joining farmd or who are in the still uh, in the college uh, you know maybe first year second year or third year they might have this question uh, in their mind so the question is when is the right time to prepare for bcps this question was asked by anusha in the chat box and i'm taking that question and i think this question will be there in minds of all the farmd students specifically that what is the right time to start preparing for bcps or similar other exams the right time to start is now personally you can start your preparation right now whether you are a farmd graduate or whether you are doing your farmd whether you have 3 years or 6 years of clinical experience you have to start now okay uh, but a focused preparation must be done at least 6 months prior to the exam so that time can be used as a revision period or a review of whatever you have learned that's what they mean by a 6 month time dedicated time okay it's not like you are starting from the basics uh, throughout those 6 month it's not possible unless you know things clearly 6 months time is not going to be enough for you for a dedicated preparation for each and every certification whether it is pharmacotherapy or oncology or critical care you need to give yourself enough time even more than 1 year will be required okay uh, unless you have a specialized or a focused training in oncology or critical care or infectious disease it's going to be a tough job for me pharmacotherapy was like going through all the diseases i used to tell my uh, people who asked me through uh, my linkedin or personal communication i used to tell them it's like learning the dipiro pharmacotherapy book you have to go through all the diseases if you want to know which all diseases you have to focus on just take the dipuro book and go through the index and see how many diseases they have mentioned those are the important ones and without knowing the treatment part 
uh, you can't attend the exam okay i'm not telling you to learn the dipro totally but just have an idea about what all diseases you have to cover because they don't give the list of diseases uh, but they just tell you have to know the patient centered pharmacotherapy okay thank you dr anita and anusha i hope we answered that question uh, dr anita one last question from my side any two or three books you would suggest to our pharmd students who can uh, you know write from uh, you know first year probably they can focus on these books so that when they complete their pharmd all they have to do is probably brush up the knowledge with the help of mcqs and the total preparation time can be little lesser for them yeah uh, during my pharmd time the book which uh, got my attention was the corda kimbel applied Thera therapeutics so they had a uh, their explanation was totally different from any other book which i used for preparing my therapeutic part they have a story kind of thing they narrate the clinical thing in a very catchy way actually they bring in a case and with that case they make it a question which is something similar to what you can see in these exams they don't give it as a multiple choice tough ones but they have a better way in presenting their content so starting from a patient condition going through each and every uh, uh, what to tell each and every clinical assessment of that case and how to take care of a patient uh, in point of that particular disease that's how they are trying to teach you so if you can utilize that book when you are learning a particular disease at least during your internship time i'm sure your whole perspective will change uh, dipro it's kind of theory and this applied therapeutics is helping you to understand that theory through a patient's condition that's the difference so the application part is well done in coda kimbel applied therapeutics book okay i i know the older version a white color book uh, which is this thick actually so it's very difficult to carry but you will get the online version i am sure the pdf is available in google at least the older one so just keep that handy and just try going through it whenever you learn some disease disease wise and therapy wise it gives a good description and i like that book very much perfect thank you so much dr anita so with this we come to the end of the entire session and I had told Dr. Anita that we'll spend one hour max, and now it has become two hours. And I, I hope you know, Dr. Anita will not mind, and definitely this is going to help a lot of pharmacy professionals across India. So thank you so much, Dr. Anita, and I'll make take a list of the books from you later on, and I'll share with all the students uh, who are attending this session. And thank you so much for your time that you have given, and thank you so much uh, for the effort that you are taking for. creating this kind of awareness and to all the participants who are watching us still on youtube and zoom uh, if you are interested to take that coupon code from dr anita please do contact her you can also message me if you want to and uh, she'll share with you the coupon code and you can uh, try your luck with bcps exams and if you need any more assistance and help uh, feel free to do interact with dr anita uh, and uh, me if you want to uh, i'll definitely reconnect you with her again so that is how it is going to help you and please prepare well for your exams and be the master of whatever you are studying that is going to help you a lot in future so thank you so much dr anita we'll meet again definitely i'm sure uh, we'll have a lot of questions coming in from the participants and i'll share the recording of this video also to all the students uh, who are attending and uh, along with that a linkedin profile link of yours will be also sent to all of them uh, mm -hmm. you know you may get a surge in linkedin requests uh, from all of them very soon so and just it's my pleasure to be with you people it's an honor to have this session and thanking uh, manoj for giving me this opportunity uh, i had a very good interaction and i guess i hope this was a useful uh, for a budding clinical pharmacist and budding pharmd graduates uh, whether you are preparing for an examination or certification or, or whichever area you choose just make sure you have a good knowledge prepare yourself okay no one is going to teach you each and every point but you have to put in some effort and we are there to guide you let us know if you need any help from us 
and when we started doing these exams and when we came out of the pharmd uh, program we had our, our own struggles uh, in entering into this particular field practicing ourselves no one else to ask how to do what to do so we all had our, our own ways to uh, proceed we had some feedbacks from the people who were working abroad someone who had good experience uh, and you must understand one thing they are not the indian form d graduates so what we don't know and what they know there's a huge gap between what we know what they know and what we don't know it's kind of uh, much bigger than what we can uh, understand so just utilize your time especially the people who are currently doing their form d utilize your time learn well you place your fifth year clerkship as well as your internship time because uh, once you start practicing dedicating your time for studying is kind of a big dream okay so unless you struggle hard it's going to be a tough time for you when you start preparing for some exams specifically and uh, as manoj mentioned uh, who are planning for a certification either pharmacotherapy or any other specialty if you wish to proceed with the discount coupon please contact us or contact me so that i can help you regarding that part and just utilize that coupon okay not frequently you get these kind of discounts and personally i requested them i was continuously in contact with the high yield med reviews and i was really thankful to them for giving me such a huge discount because what they usually give you can just visit their site and see how frequently they are giving discount coupons and what's the percentage they give so this is really a big offer Uh, given by Dr. Anthony Bastai, and make sure that you utilize it. Okay, so they have understood that the Indian pharmacists are trying to gain more and more knowledge and become a better uh, pharmacist. So just utilize it. That's all. Perfect. Absolutely. So all of you who are uh, planning to uh, go for BCPS, this is the right time. Uh, we have some discount coupons uh, with us. Uh, do reach out to Dr. Anita and myself if you want to, and then we'll help you out with the details. So that's one thing. And second one is, uh, if you are interested to learn more about oncology internships and other things, we have videos on them. Dr. Pravalika had spoken about oncology clinical pharmacy, and there is another video video by Dr. Vidya. She is a professor at Alamein College of Pharmacy. She spoke about uh, clinical pharmacy and career opportunities. She also trains clinical pharmacists. So. do watch that video it's about one and a half hours video on my youtube channel and you'll get a lot of ideas from them and if you personally want to contact any one of them linkedin is the best place and while linkedin uh, i train uh, pharmacists to use linkedin so next week if you are interested please join me we'll be having a session on how to use linkedin especially for pharmacy professionals and if you are somebody who is interested to learn medical writing then learn medical writing on june january 7th so we'll have a session on medical writing full fledged session so these are the upcoming sessions from my side and stay connected stay tuned uh, we'll meet again very very soon thank you so much so wish you all a merry christmas uh, enjoy your holidays and stay connected keep learning thank you dr anita for your time and thank you so much everyone for your time today thank you thank you for being with us i am utilizing this opportunity to thank my teachers my parents and all those who supported me throughout and especially my doctor dr rajesh shankar ayer uh, he is a neurologist and an epileptologist and he is the one who trained me in neurology as well as in epilepsy uh, and gave me the confidence in approaching the patient and he was there motivating me for the preparation as well as giving me time for the group discussions and topic presentations and of course uh, you all have helped me in learning even my small discussions with the juniors and my patients as well as the caregivers have helped me learning a lot so just utilize whatever you have been given that's the best thing okay so merry christmas and a happy new year uh, hopefully we'll have more and more board certified pharmacists in our country and more Definitely. people serving our population Yeah, okay, we want more and more pharmacists to, you know, certify, get certified from BCPS, and definitely we want a lot of them getting BCPS certification. So thank you so much, Dr. Anita. Thank you everyone for your time, and I, I'm sure this is the dinner time. So all of you enjoy, relax, have a merry Christmas and a new year. We'll definitely reconnect back, and then we'll have more sessions with Dr. Anita. If you want any specific session, 
any specific topic do write uh, write back to me i'm sure you have my email ids both of us are on linkedin so you can connect us on linkedin as well and then uh, we'll have more sessions if you want to suggest some speakers please do uh, suggest because i do these sessions every saturday so i need a lot of speakers definitely and a lot of experts and i want only pharmacy people to come here and speak and inspire our pharmacy people uh, pharmacy professionals so if you know somebody who can talk here then please do uh, share their details and i love to invite them and we'll have more interactions happening here so thank you so much dr anita thank you everyone for being with us for close more than 2 hours now and thank you so much we'll meet again thank you thank, thank you. you with your permission dr anita i'll close the session <laughs> uh,